When you think of the great Buffalo Bills receivers of all time, the first one that comes to mind is the legend Andre Reid, and now due to their recent success, Stefan Diggs. And although Reid is far and away the Bills' leader in all major receiving categories, and Diggs is working his way up the list, there's a forgotten player who ranks number two on the career receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdown lists for the Bills. And that man is Eric Moulds, a big-bodied receiver whose physical gifts allowed him to put up some incredible numbers from 1998 through 2005, where he would be the number one option for an overall average era of Bills football, an era that would see him put up the seven most receiving yards during that eight-year period. Now, Moulds does not get nearly the amount of attention he should when talking about Bills greats or overall great receivers of the late 90s to mid-2000s, but he was definitely a problem in his prime. So today, let's look at Eric Moulds and see if we can jog your memory. Eric Moulds attended George County High School, where on top of being a standout football player, he was also a standout basketball player. And according to him, choosing to pursue football was a shock to a lot of people, as he was equally as recruited in basketball. However, Moulds chose football as his grandfather preferred it, and wanted to see his grandson play before he passed away. Moulds would choose Mississippi State over Power 5 schools like LSU, Alabama, and Texas. Additionally, fellow in-state star and future NFLer Walt Harris would also choose to attend Mississippi State, and Moulds credits him for his early improvement as a receiver. According to Moulds, his decision to stay in state influenced future generations of players in Mississippi also to remain in state. Moulds' freshman season was disappointing for the Bulldogs, as they finished 3-6-2 on the season. Moulds would have a solid freshman season, playing 10 out of 11 games, as he would finish the year second on the team in receptions and receiving yards, and first in receiving touchdowns and yards per reception. Moulds was also used occasionally on special teams, as he had 7 kick returns for 143 yards. For the season, Moulds would have 17 catches for 398 yards and 4 touchdowns, averaging 22 yards per reception. 1994 was an all-around improvement for Moulds, and the Bulldogs, as the Bulldogs would finish 8-4 and, and earn a berth in the Peach Bowl, where they lost to North Carolina State. Moulds would finish first on the team with 39 catches for 845 yards and 7 receiving touchdowns, while averaging over 21 yards per reception. Moulds also had 13 kick returns for 426 yards, which helped earn Moulds a second team All-SEC selection. A couple highlights of this season would be MSU's upset win over number 23 Tennessee, where Moulds had three big catches on the game-winning drive, as well as Moulds making a big-time touchdown catch versus Alabama. 1995 was Moulds' best individual season, but the Bulldogs took a big step back and finished 3-8. Moulds would once again lead the team in receptions, yards, and receiving touchdowns, as for the season he would finish with 62 catches for 779 yards and 6 receiving touchdowns on a more modest 12.6 yards per reception, as well as 9 kick returns for 259 yards, earning him a first team All-SEC selection. Now, Mould's college stats aren't anything crazy, but that was due to the offense he played in, as the head coach at MSU, Jackie Sherrill, ran a run-first offense which was built on stacking the line and running it down the opposing team's throat. But this is what made Mould so crucial, said MSU's Director of Athletics, Scott Strickland, as scheming your defense to stop MSU's predominant run game would almost always leave Moulds open or at least in a one-on-one -on -one situation that he would usually win. Eric Moulds would enter the 1996 NFL Draft, where he would be selected 24th overall by the Buffalo Bills, and his teammate Walt Harris was selected 13th by the Bears. Moulds was part of a stacked receiver class, featuring eight future Pro Bowlers and two future Hall of Famers. This was the first time the Bills had selected a receiver in the first round since 1982, and he was hoped to be an eventual replacement for aging team legend Andre Reid. Coincidentally, Moulds had been criticized in college for being moody, selfish, and inconsistent, which were similar to labels that had followed Reed throughout his career. Reed was still the team's number one option, and Quinn Early was number two, but Moulds still got some opportunity, as he started 5 out of 16 games. And the Bills were still a good team, as they finished 10 and 6, before losing to Jacksonville in the wild card. But they were also an aging team, as the three stars of their early 90s Super Bowl runs were all in their 30s. Now, Moulds was used a lot on special teams this season, as he had 52 kick returns for 1,205 yards and a touchdown, as well as two rushing touchdowns. But as a receiver, Moulds finished the year with 20 catches for 279 yards and two touchdowns. Prior to the season, Moulds had gotten himself in some legal trouble, as he had been harassing a former girlfriend. However, his punishment for whatever it was that had happened was nothing more than a slap on the wrist. So the offseason retirement of QB Jim Kelly affected the team, as they finished 6-10 and, and missed the playoffs. Reed was still the team's number one option, but Mould earned himself a bigger role and started 8 games. 
Molds was still a big part of special teams as well, as he finished with 43 kick returns for 921 yards, and his receiving averages looked like 29 catches for 294 yards and no touchdowns. 1998 saw Molds take a big step. Reed was still a starter, but now Molds had become the other starting receiver. And while the two had similar production in regards to receptions, Molds had almost 600 more receiving yards than Reed, and he led the team in receiving touchdowns. Molds looked a lot like he did in his college days, as he was putting up these gaudy numbers by being a big play threat, as he only had four games over 100 receiving yards, but three of these saw him put up 145 yards or more. Molds' emergence would also see him relieved of his kick return duties. And the Bills were surprisingly above average, and finished with a 10-6 record, which earned them a spot against the Miami Dolphins and their number one ranked defense in the wild card. But that didn't matter to Molds, as he would have a field day en route to one of the greatest playoff performances of all time, where he had nine catches for 240 yards and a touchdown. But he did commit a fumble on the Bills' first play, and the Bills would lose to the Dolphins. So for the year, Molds would finish with 67 receptions for a Bills record 1,368 yards and nine touchdowns as he led the AFC and was second in the league in receiving yards, and this earned him a Pro Bowl and second team All-Pro selection. The 1999 season saw Eric Moulds get his first true opportunity to be a number one receiver, and Moulds started the season looking like exactly that, as he had 10 catches for 147 yards in an opening day loss versus the Colts. However, this would be Moulds' season high for catches and for yards, as he would only have two more games over 100 yards receiving on the year. But surprisingly, the Bills finished 11-5 as they had an elite defense, but would lose to Tennessee in the wildcard round, where the famous, or I guess infamous if you're a Bills fan, Motor City Miracle occurred. Check, white check. That looked like a forward pass. Taken by Dyson. Dyson's on the sideline. Dyson's gonna go all the way. Molds would not have a good game, as he had only three catches for 62 yards. And for the year, Molds would finish with 65 catches for 994 yards and 7 touchdowns. And now there was some concern around if Molds could truly be a number one option. This season would also see Molds find himself in the news again, as he was fined for making a throat slashing gesture from the sidelines in a game versus the Giants. 2000 was a step back for the Bills, as the Bills were really hurting in the cap space department, and had to cut team legends Thurman Thomas, Bruce Smith, and Andre Reid. The latter's release leaving the door wide open for Moles to become the team's unquestioned number one, as the team would finish 8-8 eight and eight and miss the playoffs, largely due to a confusing QB controversy between Rob Johnson and Doug Flutie. However, Moles would play a lot like he did in his All-Pro 1998 season, as he would have almost 30 more receptions than the previous year, and about 350 more yards and 5 receiving touchdowns. Moles had shown an ability as not just a big play threat, but a go-to receiver, which was evident in his reception numbers. It is worth mentioning that some of the attention had been taken off of Moulds, as second-year receiver Peerless Price emerged as a formidable second option for Buffalo. And Moulds would finish the year with 94 receptions, which was a then-franchise record, for 1,326 yards and 5 touchdowns, which was good for his second Pro Bowl selection of his career, and Moulds' efforts would earn him a 6-year, $45 million extension with the Bills. The Bills were awful in 2001, finishing with a 3-13 record. Moulds was unpredictable, as his stat line looked more like his 99 season, as he had just 67 catches for 904 yards, still both good for first on the team, and 5 touchdowns. And although the Bills and Moulds didn't perform as expected, they looked like they were developing a really good 1-2 punch at receiver, as Peerless Price again upped his game to nearly 900 yards and 7 receiving touchdowns. The Bills improved and finished 8-8 eight and eight, but missed the playoffs in 2002, likely due to acquiring former Pro Bowl QB Drew Bledsoe whose services were no longer needed in New England due to the emergence of this guy. And Bledsoe played great as he was selected to the final Pro Bowl of his career, where he was joined by running back Travis Henry and Moulds. The Bills had a good offense, but their terrible defense held them back. Nonetheless, Moulds had arguably the best season of his career, and the best season from a Bills receiver up to that point, as he had the first 100 reception season in Bills history, to go along with 1,292 yards and 10 touchdowns, which were all tops on the team leading to another second-team All-Pro selection and his third and final Pro Bowl. But all the weapons on the offense definitely helped contribute to Mold's stats and keeping defenses honest, as along with Henry's over 1,400 yards on the ground, Price improved again and finished with over 1,250 receiving yards and 9 touchdowns, and tied Mold's for the second-highest single-season reception total from the previous season with 94. The 3 Bills struggled and finished 6-10 while missing the playoffs. Henry had over 1,300 yards on the ground, but fumbled seven times. And Bledsoe had a fraction of the success that he had the year prior, as he finished with 11 touchdowns and 12 picks. 
In Bledsoe's defense, Price had left in the offseason to sign with Atlanta, and Moulds dealt with injuries and overall lackluster production throughout the year, as he played 13 games and finished with his lowest receiving yards total since 1997. Moulds had started the year well, with 457 yards throughout the first five games, but only had 323 yards over the final eight games that he played in. Overall, Moulds would have 64 catches for 780 yards and a single touchdown. 2004 was a redemption year for Moulds, as the 31-year-old receiver had the final 1,000-yard season of his career, and the Bills had a winning record at 9-7, but still missed the playoffs. Moulds would have 88 receptions on the year for 1,043 yards and 5 touchdowns. The Bills also drafted a receiver in the first round of the 04 draft for the first time since Moulds, in Lee Evans. The 2005 season was a bit of a messy year for Moulds, as it would end up being his last in Buffalo. The Bills would go 5-11 and miss the playoffs, as they had a new-look team with a second-year quarterback and receiver and third-year running back looking like the team's future. Moulds still had a productive year as the team's first option and finished with 81 catches for 816 yards and 4 touchdowns. However, Moulds would only play in 15 games as he was suspended for a December 11th game versus the Patriots after getting into an argument on the sideline with an assistant coach in the previous week's 24-23 loss to the Miami Dolphins, a game in which Moulds was targeted only twice and finished with zero catches. Upon news being released of Moulds' suspension, he was also sent home from practice, likely due to his reaction to the suspension. Moulds would be traded to the Houston Texans in the offseason, leaving the Bills as the second highest receptions and receiving yards player in team history. Moulds' addition to the Texans was looked at as a missing piece, providing young QB David Carr with a veteran presence, and young superstar receiver Andre Johnson with a mentor that he could learn from. But the Texans underperformed as Carr had a poor season and promising young back Dominic Davis, who later changed his last name to Williams, injured his knee the previous season and never played in the NFL again. The Texans would finish 6-10 and, and miss the playoffs, and Moulds would put up a respectable 54 catches for 557 yards and a touchdown. But Moulds was unhappy with the play of Carr, which appeared to hurt team chemistry as he was released from the team after the season. Moulds would sign with the Titans for the 07 season and earn a starting spot on the team, playing in all 16 games as the Titans would go 10-6 and, and make the playoffs, but lose to San Diego in the wild card where Moulds would have 3 catches for 18 yards. Overall, Moulds would finish his final season in the NFL with 32 catches for 342 yards and no touchdowns, and be released by the Titans at season's end, never playing in the NFL again. Moulds was a bit of a question mark coming into the league, as his ability to break a game open with his huge playability was never a question, but whether or not he had the ability to be a true number one option was less clear. Moulds had some great years in Buffalo as the team's number one, but they were very up and down, and his best years could be considered circumstantial to a degree, as 1998 saw him surprise the league in his first year as a full-time starter, and was very much producing off of big gains. And then 2000 and 2002, his other Pro Bowl seasons, saw the continued emergence of peerless price, which defenses had to then give attention to. With that being said, Moulds was never a bad receiver, and also had well above average production and reliability, as he finished only 5 yards short of the 10,000 yards club in a 12-year career that only saw him in a full-time starter role for nine of those seasons. The concerns around Moulds' character and attitude were pretty dormant throughout his career and only seemed to surface in his final few years, as is understandable for a perennial number one guy in the twilight of his career. Nonetheless, Eric Moulds was a big and exciting receiver who could keep you on the edge of your seat with his highlight reel play, and his averages of over 1,000 yards per season during his eight years as the number one option in Buffalo showed that he was much more than just a home run hitter. Thanks for watching today's episode on the Forgotten Bills great Eric Moltz. If you liked today's video, hit subscribe so you're notified when the next one is uploaded. See you next time.